How's it going guys? So today we will be installing the Kurt 31074 two inch front receiver hitch for my 2020 Chevy Colorado. I know this model of uh, receiver hitch also fits the GMC Canyon and it should be all of the, uh, the latest generation uh, Colorado and Canyons. This is a class three style uh, two inch square receiver hitch with a 5,000 pound uh, gross trailer weight, 500 pound tongue weight, and rated at 9,000 pounds for a straight line pull. I plan on running a front mounted plow, a very light duty plow just for around the house. And then also if I wanna do some light off-roading, I know there were some integrated bumpers that had winches uh, that you can mount in there, but I know I'm gonna be off-roading uh, fairly rarely. So this was a nice low cost option. So regarding price, uh, at the time of filming this video, fall of 2020, um, I was able to get this guy for around 140 bucks on Amazon. I know it's posted at a couple different sites, but Amazon proved to be the cheapest, so always make sure you guys do your shopping, uh, just so that way you're getting the best price. As for what comes with the kit, you have the two inch receiver hitch itself, as well as a set of hardware and some instructions to follow. Should be fairly straightforward. Uh, let's see what kind of tools we're gonna need. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I see a list of tools required, I always somehow end up needing more. I guess that's just my dumb luck, but anyways. The actual receiver hitch itself calls for a ratchet, torque wrench, aviation shears, 11 16 socket, as well as an 11 16 open-ended wrench, and then 10 and 15 millimeter sockets. And in order to take off the front air dam, which we're going to need to do in step one to install this guy, we're going to need a T15 torque spit, as well as a 10 and 7 millimeter socket. So, because I always say I end up needing more tools than what's required from the instructions, let's see what I have out today to get us up and running. So, uh, first off, let's take a look. We have our different sockets. I have both quarter inch drive and three eighths drive, SAE and metric. Uh, guys, I highly recommend, especially when working with hard to reach areas when removing the front air dam, try to go for the quarter inch drive if you have it. It'll save a ton of space and uh, just make the overall uh, disassembly much easier. Um, I have a set of specialty bits for the impact, um, just to kind of make things go by a little bit faster. Uh, pliers, always good to have, never know when you'll need them. And then a uh, screwdriver, you guys will end up needing that when removing some front clips after we uninstall the front air dam. We also have a set of 3 8 drive specialty sockets and bits, just in case we need any extras along the way. 3 8 inch torque wrench. And I don't know about you guys, but I always like to use a little bit of medium strength thread locker when torquing down anything and making sure things stay kind of in place. So we'll use a little bit of a thread locker just to keep things secure. And then a set of wrenches. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started by removing the front air dam. So we're underneath the truck right now. Obviously, uh, whenever you're working underneath a vehicle, make sure you got the parking brake on and the wheels are chocked so it doesn't move while you're underneath. But as you guys can see, uh, we got driver's side wheel over there, passenger side wheel over there, and all of these little guys that are hanging down are the screws that are holding on the front air dam to the front of the vehicle. So in order to take these guys out, we'll first have to stop back by the front wheel wells and remove the wheel well liners in order to get some access to where we need to be. So as you guys can see right here, we have a couple of T15 torque screws that are holding on the wheel well liner. And what we're gonna wanna do is remove a couple of these guys just so that way we have enough uh, access to reach our hand back and remove this uh, plastic piece that you see right here. Uh, this guy is in the way uh, from accessing some of these screws that you see over here. So we got a couple of those T15 torques off of the wheel well liner and you can see a better look at this plastic piece. Um, we have a couple more T15 torques up here, here, and there's another one down there. But it looks like we also need over here a uh, seven millimeter uh, bolt as well that we have to take out. And here's the piece that we took out of the vehicle. So you can see up there one, two, and three of those T15 torques, as well as the seven millimeter right there on the far edge. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that on the other side as well and we'll see what kind of access we have. So as you guys can see with that plastic piece pulled out, we now have top access to one, two, three, it looks like four of those uh, T15 torques that are holding on the front air dam. 
Um, looking down here, it looks like we may have a little bit more of a challenge getting to these guys underneath this metal bracketry, but we'll go ahead and take these uh, first ones up here off, and then we'll uh, see how we can tackle those middle guys. So these next couple of guys are going to be tricky, but what I've found is that you'll see this bracket right up here, and what we're going to want to do is take a 10 millimeter bolt out, and this allows us to bend the bumper back to have access to these uh, T15 torque screws uh, from the top side. So go ahead and remove it. There's one on the driver's side and one down there on the passenger side. We'll go ahead and remove these guys so we can bend the bumper down. And after a lot of struggling, she's finally free. So I will say, guys, that this does take a fairly long time. If you don't plan on putting your air dam back on, I have seen people cut the bottom of the bolts with a Dremel tool and they can knock it out in about five minutes. Um, I don't know what I plan on doing with this guy, so I figure I might as well just save everything uh, just in case I want to put it back on. Or if I want to go to sell it, if the next owner wants it, uh, they might as well keep it. So now it's time to uh, button everything up and prepare for uh, putting the receiver hitch on. So you want to check your uh, front uh, tow hook points that you have up there. There's a piece of foam. Uh, it might get moved around when you uh, are working on your car. So just make sure that it's nice and flush and looks kind of factory correct. Also, while you guys are buttoning things up, you'll notice uh, two of these uh, clip guys that still remain on the front bumper. You'll probably want to go ahead and take those off. There's one on the driver's side and one on the passenger side close to the wheel well. Um, that just preserves some of the aesthetics of the, the car and you won't have those silver pieces sticking out um, while you're driving along. And then also, don't forget to reattach this 10 millimeter bolt that we took out to bend the bumper back. Uh, it's going to be key to kind of keeping everything uh, together and nice and tight. So remember those two guys, button everything up with the wheel well liners and the T15 Torx, and then we'll move on to installing the receiver hitch. So with the front air dam off, let's go take a look at step one of the instructions, which calls for removing the front skid plate. Now, I can only assume that it's this plastic piece up here, and it's only a, really a front skid plate in theory, not necessarily in practice. I would not want to take this guy off-roading because rocks and all sorts of debris will just kind of eat through that plastic. But uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, this should be a 15 millimeter socket that you guys need. And we see one, two, three and four down there, those kind of uh, grayish pieces that we're going to need to take out. So let's get to it. So with that guy out, it definitely appears to be more aero than actual function for front protection off-roading. So uh, we'll go ahead, like I said, you can see those four 15 millimeter bolts uh, that we took out. Uh, just keep this piece aside later because we will need to reinstall it and just keeping the bolts together will uh, ensure that you don't misplace anything. And uh, with that, we definitely have some more room underneath, uh, so let's take a look at what we got. One more thing worth mentioning, uh, highly recommend having two people uh, do this job that way while you guys are securing it. Someone can be holding it up while the other one bolts it in. Or if you're like me and are super impatient, uh, just get a floor jack and use it to support the, uh, the front hitch while you're installing it. So, back to it. So underneath the truck, you can see the hitch right there. Um, we have these holes right up here, as well as these tabs uh, on here on the actual hitch itself. And when we come underneath the truck, uh, you can see in the frame, uh, that hole up there is what we mount that upper tab to. And there's a cross member, let's see if the light focuses, uh, that you can see right up here, that uh, those front tabs uh, that you can see right there hook into. So now it's all about uh, getting things in place and then we can start bolting things up. Okay, so I know I skipped a couple steps. I apologize for that guys, but this took way too long. So uh, the one jack system didn't end up working. So I ended up using uh, two smaller like trolley jacks underneath each of the parts of the uh, front hitch right there, like underneath the mounting tab. So what we ended up doing is uh, in the frame behind that hole right there that you see the bolt coming through, there's another hole uh, where you use like the fish wire technique. Uh, basically you're uh, given some uh, wiring and I'll show that uh, on screen right now, just an image of what that looks like. 
So essentially you take that guy and you twist it around the end of the bolt and then on the other side of this frame you fish the wire through the hole in the frame with the bolt and the washer attached to it and then uh, as you're pulling the uh, wire through uh, it comes through this side of the frame and that's where you end up uh, taking the wire off putting a little bit of a uh, medium strength blue thread locker on and uh, tightening the bolt down. Once you have both sides on the upper mount mounted make sure that you guys have them tight but not too tight because you want to be able to move the entire assembly around uh, when you line up your front tabs over here and I'll move to get a better shot of that but don't tighten these guys up first uh, make sure that they're fairly loose but just tight enough to stay in place and then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the front tabs that we have to mount as well. So right there is the tab that you guys can see that we uh, we came through the frame mount right there. Uh, essentially what we ended up doing was the same fish wire technique. So take your wire, wrap it around the end of the bolt, um, and then pull it from uh, car forward to the rear. Um, pull the bolt and the spacer through, uh, the washer I should say, and then uh, tighten uh, from the, uh, the front over here. And what you're going to want to do once you have that done uh, you want to get your torque wrench and tighten all four bolts down to 69 pound-feet of torque and then uh, you should be all set and we'll be ready for uh, mounting our skid plate back on. One last side note guys, it does say to trim the front skid plate, but if you're creative like me, you'll be able to get these two back bolts in uh, with a little bit of finessing and then the, uh, the front just kind of tucks up in underneath the uh, hitch because where you installed your two front tab bolts, it covers up where uh, the initial uh, underside bolts were for this front skid plate. So just as a little side note, you get two extra bolts as a freebie. And with that, she is done. Uh, really happy with the results overall with the way it looks. Um, I will say it is very low profile. Like you can hardly tell that it, it barely sticks out. So I'm really happy with that result. But two things I will say, uh, make sure one, you have a friend helping you out makes the job go by a whole lot easier. And also just make sure you guys have enough time to uh, get this done. I know I took it over a couple of days. So if you're thinking this might be just a quick afternoon project, uh, just make sure you guys have enough time for that. So hope this video helped. Uh, please feel free to give it a share if you guys liked it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.